All right, so can you see my whiteboard? Yep, it's completely white. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to do some thermo today. So consider this very small volume S. of interstellar material. And R is the rest of the cloud. Interstellar material cloud. Uh, so, you know, if you look at thermodynamics textbooks, it usually stands for system and reservoir. So the properties of the reservoir are, uh, it is really big. So it can land and take as much energy uh, as necessary to and from S and its temperature is not going to change very much or at all because S is so small compared to the reservoir. So S is going to be able to absorb energy, you know, heat or radiation um, from R and give it back. So S is going to have two energy levels. The first one is, the lower energy is uh, Eb, and the higher energy is Ea. So let's assume that the difference between these two is one unit of energy. And let's say that R has 100 units. And the number doesn't matter that much as long as it is you know, much more than, than S. So you assume that R has 10 particles. How many states you know, in how many ways can the cloud, the reservoir, arrange these 100 units of energy in its 10 particles? We'll say you know, particles So one way to do it will be to just put all the energy in the first particle, so the 100 units, and everything else has zero. So that's one option. Or you know we can put 99 here and one over here, or 
98 here and you know, one and one or maybe two and zero. So you get the idea, right? You're going to have many ways of arranging these 100 units in, in these 10 particles. So if the reservoir gives the system one unit, then yeah, so that it can move from EV to EA. Now the reservoir has only 99 units of energy. The number of ways in which we can arrange the 99 units, you know, among the 10 particles, is it greater than or uh, lower than with 100 units? Smaller. Why? Um, I was thinking of it like combinatorically. So the way I was thinking about it, it's like, for the first one, you can have a hundred different values. And then for the second one, it's a hundred minus whichever you had to begin with. Uh, and that is like a hundred different states. So it's a little bit complicated math, but in any case, it's very intuitive that you would have less uh, things, things to spread around, no? Yep, I, I agree with you. Uh, I, that is actually the you know the way to approach this problem with um, combinations. So, do you think that in general, uh, for a system like this, the more you have, you know, the more units of energy you have, the more ways of arranging it you have. Yeah. What about in general for, you know, like every system um, in the universe? Well, I was also about to ask, it depends on how you change the particles. If you reduce the amount of particles, you're also reducing the different combinations. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, a lot of possible physics uh, in this idea, right? If you have interaction between particles, I guess another way to see it is, um, for example, if you are arranging electrons uh, in a molecule, you know, in, in general, the number of states is going to depend on the energy, but in complicated ways. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be necessarily monotonically. It can go you know, down for some energies, um, maybe even for beta and go up again. But what is important here is that uh, this number of arrangements is in general going to be different depending on, on the energy. It could be the same, right? Like if you get lucky, but in general, it's going to be different. So let's call the number of ways. In which we can arrange these. Um, let's call it uh, G. Uh, of R, this is the reservoir, and it's going to be a function of, I'm going to use U to make it a little bit more clear. Um, it's going to be a function of the, the energy. Okay, so then in general, this one is going to be different than 
than that one. And so E would be EB or EA. Some energy. So if we want to know If you want to know in what state S is, you can measure, uh, you can look at R, the reservoir, and look at you know, the number of states that are available. So you know, let's say that This will, this will be a density of states curve, right? Let's say that this one looks a little bit like this. And, you know, in, this is for, for R. See so that you have some very small, you know, infinitesimally uh, small range. And this is E A. And then you have another one over here. That is E B. So, you know, by comparing these two in principle, you can know, you can learn something about um, the small system S. So, the probability that the state, the system S is in the state EB is going to be GR and the original energy minus EB. I guess this is um, divided by Uh, the total area under the curve over here. Um, it's Z and it is called the partition function, but we're not going to worry about it um, here, but is the area under the curve. And the probability that it is in state of energy A is going to be these, right? So we're not going to worry about the partition function because we're just going to get the ratio between these two. So we can forget about. Uh, the ugly partition function. What is the definition of entropy? the mathematical definition. Any guesses?
No? Well, the entropy is the natural log of the number of states that are available to the system times uh, Boltzmann's constant. So this is just a constant. The natural log is going to have all the properties of G. Um, you know, if you add G plus K uh, is equal to the natural log of G plus natural log of, of K. So the entropy is really just the number of states that are, that are available. It's, uh, it's just counting. So we can divide by KP over here. Then we get the, this is just a natural log of G. So then we can express this ratio as the exponent of the natural log of GR divided by exponent natural log gr All right so this is by definition the entropy So this is going to be S over KB. Well, um, it's S of that. And this one. A. Oh, this is um, the ratio. So this means that this one, because of the properties of the exponential, we can do it as So it's just a difference in the entropy of the two states. So if we define delta S of the reservoir, the entropy of the reservoir as this difference. Then we can just simplify this one in here.
Okay, so if you remember, oops. Taylor expansion. that. So let x be this. So the initial energy minus what is uh, donating to the small system. And we're going to evaluate this at uh, that initial energy. So then SR it's going to be approximately to us R of U naught. Mm. And then plus U naught minus E minus you not so this one times the derivative of the entropy with respect to the energy evaluated at you not. Then this one is the same. Um, so we're going to have the one half. This is u, uh, u minus u, so we can get rid of these ones, right? So it's just a minus e, uh, in this case b, e b. And uh, here it's going to be squared, so this this negative becomes positive. And so this is just e b squared, here is going to be a negative, negative EB. And then this is just the second derivative of the entropy with respect to the energy. Okay, so this one is just negative B, so this is what I'm going to put over here. Uh, negative EB. The Taylor expansion for the other one, for A, is going to be the same, but it's going to be replaced with A instead of B. Sir, we can barely see the ink on there. Okay, sorry. So, I just realized that 
Is it better? So just realize that this one is the same as this one. So the, the zero order expansion. And here you have the EA instead of EB. This is the squared and squared. So the energy is you know, EA and EB is small compared to U. So we can ignore you know, second order and higher terms. So this is an approximation to first order. So I'm gonna get rid of this one and this one. And I will use a different color. Was the green better? Yes? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So then this delta as it's approximately equal to um, SR U not minus SR U not, so we can get rid of those. They cancel each other. So it's going to be and then the DSDU is the same for both. So negative uh, EB uh, minus EA. Right, and the derivative of the entropy with respect to the energy. So what is what is this term? The derivative of the entropy with respect to the energy. What are the units? What are the units of uh, S? The units of the Boltzmann constant, but I don't remember those. Correct. So it's going to be KB natural log of G. This is just a number, so it has no units. So it's just the units of the Boltzmann's constant, the Boltzmann constant, so it's uh, joules per Kelvin. This is joules per Kelvin. What is uh, units of energy? Joules. So this is... Um, One over Kelvin. So what is it? It's reciprocal to temperature. Say that again. It's it's reciprocal to temperature, but what does it mean physically? Um. Well, how much energy you take when not when energy? Physically, it might be easier to do it the other way, right? So. We have dsdu equals one over temperature. So temperature is du ds. How does the energy changes? 
when you change the number of states that are available. So this is the definition of temperature. So then this one is just one over temperature uh, times, yeah, one over temperature. So we can put this one over here. So this is the exponent of that. And this you have probably seen it in many places. It tends to show up often. So then the ratio of the probabilities is uh, E To these, right? This this is the energy difference between the states, and this is the temperature. So, if we want to look at this relationship, if the energy difference, well, this is one over e. V minus EA. KVT. Uh, which one was the higher value? Um, EA was higher than EB. Uh, so this is going to be a negative quantity. Let's put it as negative. Um, I'm just going to put an E over there. So if uh, the energy difference, so if E is very large, uh, what happens to this whole term? Yeah, assuming that the temperature is constant. It becomes large. If the energy difference is large, then this becomes large? Mm, yeah, because EA is bigger than um, EB, right? Yes. So you can rewrite what you have on top as EA minus EB. Mm -hmm. And now if that energy, if that thing is, uh, if the difference between EA and EB is large, that's positive. I guess Since EA is larger. Let's look at the other case first. So if EB and EA are very close to each other, then this term is almost zero, right? So you get one. So right? if the ratio between the energy state B and the energy state A is one, what does that mean? Well, uh, they're close to each other, they're like the same. They're gonna, if they have the same energy, EB equals CA, then, and you have these two states, then you have 50% chance, right? Or there you have the same probability, 50-50 of finding yeah. it. Um, as this one increases, then the probability of finding it in A should uh, increase, uh, sorry, decrease. And decrease, uh -huh. 
this one goes to you know, it becomes smaller and smaller. So this becomes a small number. And you expect Wait, it's more? Uh, sorry, this is zero. Big, a large number. So you have a larger probability of finding it in B than in A. Yeah. What about the temperature? So if the temperature goes to zero, the whole thing becomes large. Which is the same as the probability of state B is much larger than the probability of A. And if T increases, then you suddenly have a lot of uh, energy available that you can use to move to uh, state A. And so this you go to one, right? Yeah. So you have the effects of the uh, energy difference and the temperature. Okay. So the probability It's going to be equal to the number density divided by uh, total number of states B. And the same for A. So this one, this ratio is going to be. I guess I switch it in my notes, but it doesn't matter. So EB now is on the low. So this is equal to exponent. the g's and you get the ratio and a over and b means g a So just like we had GR for the reservoir, and maybe the reservoir had a more interesting density of states, interesting behavior. Um, the atoms or the energy states in general, um, will also have different multiplicities. So if you have only two states, then the density of states may look like like that. Or they could be different. Maybe you have you can accommodate you. Know, two photons or two particles in your uh, lower energy state and only one in your uh, higher energy state. This will depend 
on the particular system that you're studying. But this is this is general. And that one is uh, this is Weinberg. Uh, 3.1.12. Okay. So, uh, detailed balance. Has um, anybody heard about the de detail balance before? No. Uh, so detail balance was introduced in 1872 by Boltzmann. So it's um it's pretty simple. Uh, so we can. Put this in the back burner for a little bit. Let's say that you have your system. There's some particles in there. I don't know if you can see them. And it is in thermodynamic equilibrium. And this could be, you know, your your cloud of um, uh, interstellar matter. Uh, so if they're in thermodynamic equilibrium, uh, the temperature is not changing which means that the derivative of the energy with respect to the entropy is not changing. And you might not see too much going on. Um, you know, if you're outside of this cloud, you would just see the black body uh, radiation. But if you zoom into this cloud, And you will see that your equilibrium uh, is actually dynamic equilibrium. So you may have you know, your one atom over here. Um, you know, it, it is accelerating locally, you know, it emits a photon, and that photon is absorbed by another uh, atom. And then this other atom. After a little bit, it's going to radiate it back. You know, maybe not to the same atom, but you know, to a. Um, this is going to be the similar process. So, this is essentially just you know, if you think about it, it's just um, conservation of energy. So the detail balance says that uh, the rate. Let's see, in equilibrium, each process in a system is in equilibrium. With its inverse process. So in this example, it is very simple. You have only two atoms, and they're uh, giving each other you know, this this photon. This will be this will comply with the detail balance principle. 
Um, are there other ways to maintain equilibrium that doesn't involve the actual processes? You know, like they have this extra energy that they have to play around with. Um, is there a different way of rearranging the energy so that each process is not necessarily in equilibrium with its with its inverse process? So another option that was discussed back in the day, I mean like 120 years ago, um, was that instead of having this reversibility, you might have, let's say, three atoms and they are just in a, in a cycle. So cyclical will be different than just with the, with the inverse process. I guess inverse is cyclical between two. Um, this has not been observed to happen. This does happen. And so if you look really closely, uh, even in systems that are in equilibrium, you will see that the equilibrium is dynamic and these, uh, yeah, the, the detail balance also holds when the system is not in thermodynamic equilibrium. It's called um, local detail balance. So if you look close enough, uh, you will see this happening even if there's no thermodynamic equilibrium. Um, and you know, this is the same that I guess you guys discussed in. Um, in one of the of the forum uh, about the reversibility of physics, right? So if you only have these, then you can play the tape, you know, in the forward direction, so plus time, or in the backward direction, so negative time, and the physics will be the same. So, and, you know, again, this is the the, the time symmetry. What was interesting is that uh, Boltzmann showed that if you have this kind of process and you start with low entropy in your system, um, entropy will always increase. So it's not incompatible, you know, with, uh, with the second law, uh, definitely. So, you know, this was kind of a, an old idea already when Einstein came around, but he used it for uh, the, the transitions that we were talking about last time. So detailed balance says, Uh, I get confused with this. So, this is uh, absorption. absorption and it goes from state EB to state EA. And there are NB, uh, this is per volume, um, uh, systems or, um, sorry, particles or atoms that are in this state energy, NB. So it has to be in state 
and B for it to move to state uh, EA. Sorry, in state B to move to state A. And then this one is the uh, simulated emission. So this is from EA uh, down to EB. So it's going to emit a photon and it's going to go down in the energy. And this is a spontaneous emission. Also from EA to EB. So from this, we know what uh, MB and, and A are. So we calculated the ratio. So we can rewrite that equation. going to be uh, B, B, A, and instead of the M, B, we can write G, B, E to the minus E, B over K, T, K, B, T. to A so there's only um, one last thing that is missing in this equation The uh, absorption cannot be just any absorption, right? Like it has to be uh, emitted first in order for it to be absorbed. So this is going to be proportional to the number of photons for a certain um, energy difference. So we can put in here. Uh, this one, There's more space. This is the um, black body radiation. And it's at this particular uh, frequency at the uh, transition energy EA to EB. So that one looks uh, kind of like that, right? So in a different temperature, it will look like that. And then this is wavelength, one over frequency. So let's call this um, temperature beta and temperature alpha. and temperature alpha is greater than temperature beta. So this is at a particular temperature and a particular frequency. So let's say that it's uh, over here.
So as you change the temperature of the system, of the black body, then the number of photons that are going to be available for emission at that temperature um, is going to change. So the frequency here remains the same. And we're looking at uh, the transition between atomic levels. So it's independent of the temperature. Um, but the number of uh, photons available will depend on the temperature. So these guys are uh, independent of the temperature, the, the Einstein coefficients. Uh, black body radiation. Is So mathematically, it's not very friendly. Um, but graphically, it's easy to think about. OK, so if you uh, apply the condition that uh, these guys are independent of the temperature, then what you're going to get is this one and again the the multiplicities might be different and as you might you know, expect, the emission will depend depend on the um, black body radiation. Okay, so we saw before that uh, K, so the absorption um, This is energy density absorption per unit length was H nu, so the energy. Then we had this V function, which was just you know how your um, the 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 shape of your um, emission line. So this depended on the temperature also, as you remember, through the velocities, which will Doppler shift the energies a little. So yeah, this is going to look more like um, a Gaussian. Then we had the energy. That was divided by the speed of light, uh, which is uh, propagating. So now that we know uh, these relationships, 
we can express the this k in terms of the exponentials. So there's a lot of kind of nasty algebra there. But you end up with Well, it's not super nasty, but it's not. It's a little long to write on the, on the board. Okay, so now we have the absorption at a particular wavelength as a function of essentially the, the density. So how many um, absorbers or emitters you have per volume and the multiplicity, which depends on the, the particular electronic structure that we're looking at. So that's pretty nice. So the other one was J, the admission one. And you know, similarly, we had the H nu, D nu. And then this one just had the admission coefficient. So last time we saw, or we assumed that it seems to be true or close to true, that even though J, the emission per unit length, and the and K, the absorption per unit length, they you know, formally depend on that distance, the ratio, because the same atoms are doing the absorption and the emission, the ratio is independent of the path. And so you just have, it just depends on the frequency. So we have uh, these ones over here. So this is gonna be, equal to I um, H nu AD cubed over C squared So this is, again, you're just a function of the densities and the uh, electronic structure of the atoms. And this phi AB is the energy difference well, with, with uh, the Planck constant, the energy difference between um, the energy states. A and B or B and A. So the other quantities that we had seen you know the whole thing um, L is a function of 
mu and s this s1 was the uh, starting point and into negative tau tau dependent also on the frequency uh, plus and then we have the j over k and a four pi times c over there then one was one to the one minus e to negative tau so you know consider the case in which um, S1 is over here, and you're observing from over here. So the luminosity at this point, uh, sorry, not the luminosity, the energy density, uh, is going to be zero because that's by definition the end of your cloud. So then we can forget about this term. And we have in this simpler case, we have the ratio between J and K. And so the only thing that we're missing is um, tau. We trust that. Um, so we calculated k in terms of these variables. Um, this one, okay, this one we can, we're going to be able to rewrite it as Black body radiation and then divide by four pi. One minus U of T. With tau equals H nu in that one DBA one minus exponent. So again, all of these are um, not constants, but you will get them from your experiment, um, except for this one. So NB, capital NB, the function of S, S1 to S, NB, small NB. So this is a, uh, a volume density, um, number density, but per unit volume. So if you integrate over a path, you get this one which is called the column density. So if you have your cloud, okay.
just like you have, um, and this is a volume, but it's infinitesimally uh, thin, the radius. So that will be, and you have the different um, MV in your cloud. So if you integrate over the whole path, you get uh, this number. Okay, so let's just focus on this one. What happens if tau, the optical depth, is very large, much greater than one. What happens to the this energy density? Are you guys awake? Everybody's sleeping? No, I'm here, I guess. So what happens if that one is um, is really large? If tau is large. The whole bracketed expression becomes one. And so that will, what will that be if this becomes one? Well, they'll end up being zero. This one is zero, right? So yeah, that's what I was saying. When can... So what is this? Well, this is just the the number that you will get. This is just a, a black body radiation, right? So this is a particularly allowed transition. If it's not allowed, well, you're just gonna see this number. If the transition is not allowed, what are you going to see? Nothing. So you don't have absorption or emission. Um, if you have a transition between those energy levels, then uh, and you know, it's, um, uh, it's thick optically, then you just get these, um, you can sweep it and get the black body radiation. So what happens if uh, tau is very small, so close to zero. Close to zero. The whole thing is zero. What would that mean? So the optical depth depending, depended on how far you will go, right? So if this is close to zero, it means that you are you know, kind of over here. So you will not really observe anything about the cloud. You're probably outside of the very uh, barely in. So there's no energy density. If it is optically thick, so and you traverse the whole thing, then you, and this is in thermodynamic equilibrium, 
then you will get the black body radiation of these um, of this cloud. Although you know only for that particular allowed um, frequency. So. The one of one of the most famous transitions is called the twenty one centimeter of hydrogen, and I think we're going to have some uh, homework problems about it. So in this particular transition, we have your hydrogen atom. So we have your, your proton and we have your electron. They have a spin, they are uh, fermions. So yeah, this could be up, this could be also up, or the other way around, right? Maybe they don't agree. So they, they either have the same spin or different spin. Do you think there's gonna be an energy difference between these two states? There is an energy difference. So, the energy difference is so tiny that you know if you just grab hydrogen atoms um, randomly, you know half of them are going to be uh, different spins, and ha the other half are going to be uh, aligning the same direction. It's, it's very it's a very small difference in energy, but it is there. Um, I think the half life of this transition is somewhat larger than the uh, current age of the universe. But because you have so many uh, hydrogen atoms, uh, this transition actually happens you know, often enough that you can observe it. So the wavelength of this transition is 21 centimeters, which is in the radio. Uh, it's much colder than, uh, or much lower energy than the um, uh, Big Bang radiation, so the microwave background. So it's actually very easy to, to observe, and uh, it is emitted by uh, these hydrogen clouds. So whenever you look at a galaxy, you're going to observe this 21 centimeter uh, radiation. And uh, you can find you know, densities and everything um, based on your observations here. All right, that's uh, what I have for you today. Questions, uh, suggestions, anything? Um, when will be the next exam? The next exam? There's no exams. Or final exam, I mean. Final exam? So there's no final. So there's another two uh, research projects. Um, so originally they were due on a Thursday, but you know we moved them to Sunday. So check the you know, check the syllabus. I think it's in maybe three weeks, the third one. And then the yeah, last how one- about check to it then? The last one is due um, on finals week, during finals week. But okay. there are uh, several routes to get an A. So, you know, I expect that some of you, probably several of you, uh, will not have to do the, the third research project. Uh, sorry, the, the fourth one, the last one. But yeah. I'll probably end up doing it anyway, just have something to do. 
<laughs> yeah, if you really want. <laughs> do people actually like have to look into doing more homework to get something to do? Uh, I've been through that route already. I can I can lead you of some of my work <laughs> if you're okay with it. Yeah, nice try, man. <laughs> yeah, so yep, a, a, a few more weeks. Um, let's see. There's. Yeah, I think we're almost done, right? So we're in week 10 or something. Kind of crazy. I think we have five more weeks. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's five more. And one by so and faster. So there's a discussion for discussion due today. Um, I have been enjoying listening to your recorded conversations. It's fun. Uh, it's easier than, well, it's not easier, but I guess it's more entertaining than checking out the, the written posts. Um, yeah, I've noticed that you guys stopped doing homework. Not everybody, but some of you. Um, is it like, taking too long or something? Do you have any comments about that? I don't find any, any problems with it. Just sometimes it gets a little challenging, but I figure it out later on. It should be a little challenging, right? It has more to do with all the Yeah, but it's not overly so. Yeah. Yeah, if it's overly so, it's difficult to learn anything. But if it's too easy, it's also difficult to learn anything. <laughs> uh, I keep thinking that's the team's message. Let me see, Alexis said something. We just have too much stuff and not enough time. What are you doing in lecture then? Just kidding. <laughs> um. Yeah, when I was in grad school, I didn't have time to go to lectures, unfortunately. All right, so if there's no more comments, um, I'll see you on Tuesday. Do you want, so Tuesday is uh, election night. I don't know at what time things start or if you're going to watch anything. Um, do you want to move the Lecture like in like five or something instead of six or no? Or it doesn't matter. I mean, I knew a few of those. It are... makes no difference at all. Okay. A few of those are not available at that time because um, at least Ramon, VNA, Alexis, and I are on class at four thirty. So. Okay, it's fine. Just didn't want you guys to. Um, be watching the news and not be watching my lecture. <laughs> oh yes, I would love to watch the drama. I mean, the news on TV about politics. <laughs> uh, are you over twenty-one? Yeah, I'm twenty-three. Yeah, so you can just be sad about it. <laughs> All right. Why um, do you? Why do you have to be over twenty-one to be sad about it? <laughs> or angry. Oh, you just, yeah, yeah, it's, I guess it's kind of um, a stereotype these days. You're just like drunk watching the news. So everything is so oh. sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you on Tuesday. Bye. Bye. All right. See you Tuesday. Mm.